Hi, this is Jackie. Well, three born babies are forever babies. And today I'm outside out on the deck enjoying this beautiful day and have decided to share with you one of my absolute favorite books from my childhood. And at the end, I've got something that I'd like to share with you. The Velveteen Rabbit. There was once a beautiful velveteen rabbit. His coat was spotted brown and white and his ears were lined with pink satin. On Christmas morning, he was the most wonderful gift in the boy's stocking. All morning the boy played with him, and then, in the excitement of looking at all the other presents, the velveteen rabbit was forgotten. For a long time, nobody paid much attention to the rabbit. The mechanical toys were rude to him because he was only a stuffed bunny. But the play horse, who had been there longer than any of the other toys and knew all about toy magic, was very kind to the rabbit. One day the rabbit asked the play horse, what is real? Does it mean having batteries or lights? Real isn't how you are made, said the play horse. It's a thing that happens to you when a child really loves you. That is when you become real. One evening, at bedtime, the boy couldn't find the toy dog that slept with him, and so his mother gave him the rabbit instead, and from then on the velveteen rabbit slept with the boy every night. The boy would talk to him, and they would play wonderful games and whispers. The rabbit slept snug and warm in the boy's arms all night long. Spring came. And wherever the boy went, the rabbit went, too. He had rides in the wheelbarrow and picnics on the grass. And one day, he heard the boy tell his mother, My bunny is real. He's not a stuffed toy. That was the happiest day of the rabbit's life. After a while, the velveteen rabbit got raggedy from being loved so much. Some of his fur rubbed off, and the pink and his ears faded, but the boy didn't notice. He thought his bunny was beautiful. When summer came, they played together in the woods almost every day. Then one day, the boy got very, very sick, and the doctor said that all the toys in the room had to be tossed out because they were full of bad germs. The boy got better, but the little rabbit was put in a sack with the other things and taken outside. The velveteen rabbit wriggled his way to the top of the sack and looked out. Nearby, he could see the woods, where he and the boy had played. He thought of how happy those times had been, and how much the boy had loved him. A tear trickled down his little shabby nose and fell to the ground. And then, a strange thing happened. Where the tear fell, a mysterious flower began to grow. It had emerald leaves and a beautiful golden blossom. The blossom opened and a fairy stepped out. I am the toy magic fairy, she said. I take care of the playthings the children have loved. And when they are old and worn out, I make them real. But wasn't I real before, the rabbit asked. The fairy said, you were real to the boy because he loved you, and now you shall be real to everyone. In the meadow, the velveteen rabbit saw wild rabbits dancing with their shadows on the velvet grass. Run and play, little rabbit, said the toy magic fairy. You are a real rabbit now. Fall and winter passed. In the spring, when the days grew warm and sunny, the boy went out to play. In the woods, he saw two rabbits peeping at him from under a bush. One was gray, and the other had brown and white spotted markings, a little soft nose, and bright round eyes. He seemed familiar to the boy. Why, he looks like my old bunny, who got lost when I was sick, the boy thought. He never knew that it was really his own bunny, returning to look at the boy, who had first helped him to become real. So, of course, this isn't the full version of the Velveteen Rabbit. 
as the Velveteen Rabbit to read it properly in the full version it takes just about a half an hour to do. But I did come across something that I had in my trunk um, upstairs in my bedroom, my old sea captain trunk that my grandfather gave me. And I did want to share it with you today. Now, I thought first I'd give you a little bit of background on why I read this story to you. When I was a little girl, when I was seven years old, my, my whole life I had been very, very sick. And my parents had taken me to doctors. Doctors didn't know what was wrong with me. But I did come to a point when I was seven where I couldn't hold down food or even water. And every day I was becoming weaker and more ill, um, literally by the second. I remember the doctors had put me in the hospital for a week and done tests on me. But medicine at that time was not what it is now. And they didn't know what was wrong with me. So as ill as I was, they did send me back home. Within a couple of weeks, I had gotten to the point where I couldn't even walk up the stairs um, to go up to my bedroom. And I remember I dropped down to about 35 pounds, which is a very scary number in pound weightage for a seven-year-old child. And my dad used to carry me upstairs and put me in bed. Now, I believe my parents knew that if they didn't act soon, that I was going to simply not make it. And my parents took me to see a kidney specialist that week. I did go in for surgery. Um, they told my parents that they weren't sure if I would make it or not because of my size. And I was in the hospital for about a week. I had a kidney that had gone bad or was probably in bad shape when I was born, but no one knew what the cause of my illness was because, as I said, medicine was not then as it is now. So we're looking about at about 45 years ago when this happened. So I did have surgery, and I was home. I had this surgery in 1971. I was seven years old in September. So this would be um, my anniversary month. I didn't start school that year until after Christmas because I was too small and tiny um, and not healthy enough to go to school. But um, I did want to share with you something um, that I have had all the way through my life um, since I had the surgery. And these are my velveteen rabbits. This is my teddy bear and he was given to me the first time in the hospital and as you can see there's not much fur left on him as we were very poor when I was a child and then on top of that to have um, all the medical issues that I had it was a struggle for my parents to get by my aunt and uncle gave me this little teddy bear and I always called him Teddy and this is my sad sack and sad sack is a little clown that another aunt and uncle had given to me and that was when I came home from my surgery as you can see he's been sewn several times and there's not much left to his hands I've had them for 45 years these are my velveteen rabbits, Teddy and Satsack. I took them everywhere with me. They were by my side all the time, and I would sneak them to school in my backpack or my book bag. I would take them to doctor visits and hug them close when I was sick. 
sleep with them, talk to them. Very, very, very dear to me. So I hope you enjoyed my story and I hope you enjoy my little velveteen rabbits here. I hope you all have a great night and remember, count your blessings. Bye-bye.